everyone and welcome to another episode of the Computer Doctor Show Mobile Edition. Uh, in this episode I thought I would talk about um, how to use Zoom so that it doesn't, um, so that you get nice smooth operation from Zoom. Now Zoom obviously is uh, becoming more and more uh, used, more and more people are using it. Um, but people are soon starting to find out there are little quirks to using Zoom to maximize how well you come across, how well your voice comes across, and, and how well your, uh, your frame rate, if you will. Now, Zoom is very, very robust. Uh, the, uh, the developers that, uh, in the background, if you look at the history of Zoom, uh, the people that built it, built it actually very, very well. It can handle good connections, it can, ha it can handle bad connections, um, it can change the way the, uh, the signal comes through, uh, even if you have a, uh, even if you have start with a good signal and somewhere in the middle of the Zoom session, your signal happens to go bad, it has the ability to switch uh, to a uh, lower, um, uh, uh, a, a lower frame rate and a lower um, uh, quality video, if you will. <laughs> okay. So, uh, in this video, I'm going to uh, maybe talk a little bit about how you can have a fast internet connection and your computer be working perfectly fine, but you still have your, Zoom is still switching you down to. The, uh, uh, the the low resolution mode, okay? So, if you are getting a low resolution mode, one of the things that you have to check and pretty much understand, uh, I'll, I'll explain how it, the reason why first, and then I'll explain the, how you can test it. So, the World Wide Web, the internet, the way information is passed through, it is not passed through through a stream. It's passed through in packets or chunks of data. It is not a consistent thing. Now, that may, that comes into play when, like for example, if you request a website, you're on your computer, you're surfing the web, you type in a website, you hit enter. What the computer is actually doing in the background is it's requesting that site, IP addresses, DNSs, uh, all kinds of uh, TCIP, UDP, all that stuff. Basically what is happening is the computer is requesting a website to be displayed on the computer screen. So there are two methods of communication. The outgoing message is the request and the receiving of that website is the reply, that's incoming. So you have upload, which is your request, and then download, which is the website coming in. So it's a two-way communication digitally through the internet. Now, what most uh, internet service providers will offer you, they will offer you a faster download, but when it comes to using Zoom, you need both fast download and fast upload because you want to see and hear the people that are on Zoom and you also want them to see and hear you. So Zoom requires a little bit higher of, uh, uh, of a upload speed than the download. But the download is like the bread, bread, breadwinner of the, of the uh, internet uh, services, right? So they will always advertise to you a better internet service as far as fast download speeds, but that doesn't necessarily mean that because you have a faster download speed, that you'll actually have a better zoom experience. So you want to check the upload speed. So if you were to do a speed test uh, using Ookla, or I used to like to use uh, this uh, PC Magazine speed test, uh, which is this big orange screen, uh, they give you the upload speed, the ping speed, the uh, download speed, and also the jitter, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the jitter measurement which is measured in milliseconds. So in order to have a good zoom experience, you need good download, good upload, good, very, very low jitter. 
something less than two milliseconds. Anything over two milliseconds, I've noticed two milliseconds seems to be the magic number of when you start, of what actually like trips zoom into going into the low bandwidth mode. So anything higher than a two mega, uh, millisecond um, jitter is bad when it comes to using zoom. Um, you want to have at least a uh, 5 to 10 megabits speed of upload because Zoom utilizes very much the upload just as much as the download and you want to have very low jitter. Uh, ping is not all that important. Ping kind of refers to how fast it's able to initialize the connection. But once you're connected, you don't have to have a fast ping, you know, after that per se. Although it does travel in packets, the ping is not, doesn't come into play that much, but the jitter does. Uh, so, what can you do if you measure your system and you notice that you have a high jitter and a low download speed? Well, that is something that you have to talk with your internet service provider about. So when you call them up, push all the options for uh, internet trouble and tell them that you have uh, a low upload speed and a lot of jitter. Now, they're going to fight you on this. They're going to fight and they're going to try to say that it's your router that's the problem. Now, many times it can be. Um, one of the things you want to make sure, you want to make sure that you've already uh, restarted the router, you've already power cycled it. Uh, something else that is that can also reduce the jitter, which is what you want, is to uh, plug it in, is to plug your computer directly to the router using uh, an ethernet cable instead of running wireless, if that's the case in your case. Um, if you're still not getting good readings on these uh, speed tests and jitter tests, um, you have to call your internet service provider and tell them about it. Um, one of the first things that they're going to blame is your router, okay, which they can do. That's why I always recommend that you rent the router from the ISP. That way they can't blame the, uh, the router as much as they would like and they can get to the real root of the problem instead of blaming your router because that's something that they love to do. And um, the other thing that you can do is uh, do what I like to call a packet test where you run a continuous ping or continuous uh, packet using uh, uh, the ping command in the uh, command line. You open two of them. One, you run a continuous ping by typing the word PING and then the, uh, your router's uh, IP address, space dash T. That will do it an unlimited number of times, okay? As that's going, you open up a second uh, command window and you do ping www.google.com or www.amazon.com some website that you know runs very, very well. Um, and so www.google.com space dash T. And you want to run those simultaneously side by side. And what we're looking for is we're looking for variations of time. If you see a dropout or a big change of time on the side going to Google or Amazon, but you see no problem with the connection directly to your router, then that means that there that the connection between your computer and the router is perfectly fine. And that uh, the problem exists somewhere from your router outside your house or outside of your responsibility, okay? That's what that test means. Internet service providers hate it when you do this test because it exposes all of the uh, all of the bad points of their infrastructure that they have to go out and fix and spend their money and their resources to fix. So uh, I hope you're able to uh, get some helpful information from this video. I hope you are all uh, able to uh, get on Zoom and 
use zoom to the best of your ability. Um, there's no real telling of when this everything is going to be completely uh, uh, done and over with with COVID-19. I hope you all are staying safe. This is Aaron Moss, Computer Doctor of Tucson. I will see you in the next video. Be safe, and I'll see you next time.